Oh, hi, my lovely learners. We are back again. And I remember we treated punctuation marks one, and that had to do with full stop, question mark, and so on. And then I promised that I was going to bring the punctuation marks part two, and here we are today. My name is Jacqueline Kunedua Samoa, and you're all welcome to Joy Learning. Just as we keep saying, Joy Learning, keep learning always. You're welcome. And all you have to do is to get your pens, your books, so you can jot down a few things, just as we do it always. So now we move straight to the objectives. And then our objectives for the day we have, by the end of the lesson, the learner will be able to review last week's lesson on full stop, comma, etc., etc. meaning that there are a lot more. You should be able to write complex sentences using the semicolon and exclamation approximately or appropriately. Again, we should be able to write sentences using the semicolon, the dash, the hyphen, parentheses, and quotation marks appropriately. Now, we should be able to write a composition of two paragraphs, each of five lines, using upper and lower case letters, the hyphen, quotation mark, and exclamation marks appropriately. So uh, RPK, the relevant previous knowledge, learners write sentences and essays at school and at home using punctuation marks like the quotation mark, we have full stop, we have semicolon and then hyphen. I mean, in our essays or in our writings, daily writings, we do see all these quotation marks in there. Now, during reading, we see some marks or signs. Some of them are seen at the end of sentences. Others are also seen at the middle of sentences. Now, they divide written matter into sentences, clauses, and then phrases. Okay? They divide written matter into sentences, clauses, and phrases. The signs or marks make reading interesting and understandable. Now, without them, it will be very difficult to understand what you read or what we read. So such marks or signs are generally what we call punctuation marks. Okay, so one importance of punctuation marks simply talks about the fact that it, it, it makes the reading interesting and then it makes it more understandable. It gives real meaning to your reading or to your writing. Now, what are punctuation marks? So punctuation marks change the meaning of compositions or sentences when they are not put or placed at the proper places. Okay, punctuation marks change the meaning of compositions or sentences when they are not placed or put at the proper places. So now let's look at these examples. We have, my uncle said Essenam has eaten. My uncle said Essenam has eaten. And then the B, we have, my uncle said, SNM has eaten. My uncle said, SNM has eaten. Now, these two sentences above are the same in writing, but have different meanings. Now, let's go back to the sentence again. The first one, my uncle said, SNM has eaten. And then the second one we have, my uncle said, SNM has eaten. Now I move on again. All right, so they are, they are two different things. They, they have the same writing, but the difference ha in meaning are, are there. I mean, so clear. Now, this is due to the fact that the marks have been placed at different places in the sentences. Okay, the marks, that is the quotation marks, have been placed, you know, at different places in the sentences. So the first sentence means that Esnam was telling someone that her uncle had eaten. Okay, Esnam was telling someone that her uncle had eaten. However, the second sentence means that Esnam's uncle was telling someone that Esnam had eaten. Okay, Esnam had eaten. Now, let's study the punctuation mark. So, we have the semicolon, we have quotation mark, we have the hyphen, we have parenthesis, exclamation, and then dash. And I remember last week, we spoke about full stop, 
question mark, comma, colon, and then apostrophe. Um, but I am going to go over, I mean, quickly before we move on to today's lesson okay so we are going to i mean talk about these ones briefly in a very rush manner and then we are going to tackle the ones or the remaining ones for today so i start with full stop all these ones we did them in our last lesson all right so full stop it is used at the end of a sentence that is a statement so the examples we have here he is jumping she is going to the market i love my brother so much Okay, it is used at the end of a sentence. So these are simple sentences. And so you can see the full stops in red. Now, in some abbreviations, it is used to show the omission of letters. Remember, and then I gave you doctor. I mean, the full spelling of doctor is here, D-O-C-T-O-R. And then in the short version, we have D-R with a, uh, a full stop there. Okay, then we have sergeant. That's a full spelling of sergeant. And then Mr in a short form and then in full writing then we moved on to quotation marks so it has only one use it is used at the end of a direct question it is used at the end of a direct question so look at these examples where is your father where have you been all day what is your full name have you two met before okay and you can see my question mark at the end of the sentence with a red ink i would want to believe that you 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 jotted them down so you remember what i am saying and then like we do you are going to give me two or three examples on your own so with the question marks i have my simple questions here where is your father you can equally give me another question or another sentence in a question form where have you been all day you can give me another one what is your full name you can give me another one on your own okay then we moved on to comma, comma. It has more uses than any other punctuation marks. Remember, the first one is it is used to separate a list of names or items. So example, we have the sponge, you can see the comma, soap, comma, brush and comb are in the bucket. Again, it is used before direct speeches. So let's look at the examples. They said, we are afraid. They said, we are afraid. I will come out successfully, he said. I will come out successfully, he said. He is my baby brother, said Amina. He is my baby brother, said Amina. It is used before direct speeches. And here are the examples. C, still under the comma, it is used when some adjectives precede nouns. It is used when some adjectives Proceed now. So let's look at these examples. Three tall, fair-colored girls are coming. Three tall, fair-colored girls are coming. So you can see my comma there. The next one, we have a young, talented boy just left this place. A young, talented boy just left this place. The next one, still on comma, it is used in direct addresses. And then the examples we have here, Daniel, please come and take your bath. It means Daniel really doesn't like bathing. Okay, so Daniel, please come and take your bath. The next one we have, Mommy, don't forget to give me a call. Mommy, don't forget to give me a call. And the third one we have, Kwame, I want to talk to you. Kwame, I want to talk to you. E, it is used before some conjunctions in long sentences. It is used before some conjunctions in long sentences. Examples I have, I have met him, but I didn't say a word to him. I have, or I met him, sorry, but I didn't say a word to him. I met him, but I didn't say a word to him. The next one, mommy enjoyed the meal. Meanwhile, it was daddy who cooked. I think the table, the tables are, I mean, the, the, the table is turned. Mommy enjoyed the meal. Meanwhile, it was daddy who cooked. I mean, most of the time, it's mummies. I mean, it's the mummies that cook. But this one is telling us that mommy rather enjoyed, but then it was daddy who cooked. So daddy cooked this time around. 
okay so here we go mommy enjoyed the meal of course if if she didn't suffer so much then it means she was going to enjoy it okay mommy enjoyed the meal meanwhile it was daddy who cooked and you can see a comma there still on comma in contrasting words phrases and clauses that are introduced by the word not commas are used in contrasting words phrases and clauses that are introduced by the word not commas are used so example he comes here monthly not weekly so you can see my comma there he comes here monthly not weekly any other example from you I trust you. I want to believe that you have just written your examples down. You are just too good, my learners. And I trust you can do that. Now, the player is in dire need of football, of football boots, not Jesse. Of course, a football player, okay, is in dire need of football boots, not Jesse. Okay. Still on comma. So a comma is used after yes or no or a mild exclamation so let's look at these examples yes he is in the living room yes he is in the living room no you cannot do that no you cannot do that yes i would speak with him yes i would speak with him no she just left this place no she just left this place and you can see my commas right there Still on comma, it is used to separate a person's name from a degree, a title, or affiliation that follows it. So let's see. Saint Joseph, PhD, was once a referee. Saint Joseph, PhD, was once a referee. Kwesi Boache, GFA, is dead. Okay. Then we moved on to apostrophe. So when a letter or some letters are taken away from some words, an apostrophe is used to show. So we have can't. So the full, the full or the writer, the full writing is cannot. All right, cannot. So, but then the short form with an apostrophe, we have can't. So C A N apostrophe T. So you can see um, the difference there. The next one we have couldn't. So the full one we have could not, we have didn't, did not, and then we have won't, so will not. Still on apostrophe, it is used to show possession. Singular nouns take apostrophe and S. Singular nouns take apostrophe and S. Kofi's chair is not in the living room. Kofi's chair is not in the room. So you can see Kofi and apostrophe S. Yes, so singular nouns take up an apostrophe or an apostrophe s now my brother's television is not working so my brother singular noun taking an apostrophe s my brother's television is not working Amma's dress is quite bad mommy's car is not at the car park okay singular nouns taking apostrophe s plural nouns that ends in s have only apostrophes okay plural nouns that ends in s have only apostrophes now let's look at these examples the learners files are 20 in number the learners files are 20 in number remember plural nouns we have here learners and that's the plural so ends in apostrophe s okay so the learners files are 20 in number. Now, the footballers' jerseys are beautiful. Footballers, we have plural. Okay, so it ends in S with an apostrophe. So plural nouns that do not end in S have S and apostrophes. So many things, right? So let's look at these examples. We have the women's coal pots have been stolen. Okay, the women's coal pot have been stolen. Now, most of the time we have woman and the plural form is women. We don't have women's. Okay, but this is telling us that plural nouns, which is women already, that do not end in S, of course, women do not end, end in S, have S and apostrophe. Okay, so the women's coal pots have been stolen. Now, the children's toy are in the big box. 
The children's toys are in the big box. The children's toys are in the big box. Then we moved on to colon. So it is used to separate a list of items from an introductory statement. So such statements often have words as follows. Example, he brought the following items, a mat, a pillow, a cloth, and a mattress. Okay, so uh, the colon is used to separate a list of items. So you can see he brought the following items. So after the items, you can see the colon there. And then we started listing the things. Again, it is used to separate hour and minutes in expressions of time. So let's look at these examples. 12.20 a.m., you can see the colon between the 12 and the 20. The same with 9.45 this morning, 10.45 p.m., and then 1.15 a.m. Still on colon, it is used to separate the salutation from the body of a business letter. You remember business letters? Okay, so with examples we have... Dear Mr. Godson, dear sir, dear Madam Grace. Okay, so you can see our colon there. So these are um, all that we treated last week. So we have the full stop. That is the diagram for full stop. We have the comma fact. We have the apostrophe and then the caustic mark and then the colon. All right. So these are the ones we treated last week and then we are moving on to this week's own. And I, I would want to believe that um, I refreshed your memory or I refreshed your mind on what we learned last week on punctuation marks. So we move on to today's one. Um, we are continuing with number six. That is semicolon. Semicolon. And what do we use it for? It is used to separate related main clauses that are not joined by a coordinating junction. So let's see. He is an Ewe. He is an Ewe. He comes from Hohoi. Okay. He is an Ewe. He comes from Hohoi. More examples. We have some of them played volleyball. Others went to the swimming pool. So you can see the semicolon. Some of them played volleyball, others went to the swimming pool. The third example, we have some students went to the mall, others went to the market. Okay, some students went to the mall, others went to the market. So I, I brought, you know, pictures of it. I, I decided to bring more than one so you can pick from. Okay, so that is semicolon for you, the pictures of semicolon. Okay. I would want to believe that you are jotting down a few things, right? I still continue. It is used between independent clauses when the second clause starts with a transition word like, in fact, for example, however, therefore, besides. So these are transition words, okay? And then let's see what we have in there. So all of them failed the entrance exams. You can see the semicolon there. Therefore, they are in the home. Okay? Therefore, they are in their homes. So. Now, I just love this student. You can see the semicolon. In fact, she is so serious with her studies. I just love the student. In fact, she is so serious with her studies. More examples, I don't like her attitude. For example, she is always casting insinuations. I don't like her attitude. For example, she is always casting insinuations, meaning that she is always insulting or talking about people, you know, saying things to um, annoy people, casting insinuations, making some comments that are not too good. Okay. Then the next one we have, he doesn't come here at all besides... He is not our friend. He doesn't come here at all. Besides, he is not our friend. You can see the semicolon there. My dad will be very busy with his work. However, he will try and take you to the mall. My dad will be very busy with his work. However, he will try and take you to the mall. Right. So we move on to number seven. That is a quotation mark. Quotation mark. So it is used to enclose a word or group of words and separate them from the rest of the sentence. What do we mean? It is used to enclose a word or group of words 
and separate them from the rest of the sentence. Let's look at these examples. The schoolboy said, I feel so sad. The schoolboy said, I feel so sad. So that was what he said. I feel so sad. Okay. It is separating two different things. Like it's separated. So the schoolboy said, I, I feel so sad. The next one. Where is the key? Kwesi asked. Where is the key? Kwesi asked. And you can see the quotation marks there. Okay. The second one, I mean, is a quotation mark beginning. And then first one, the first uh, uh, example, I mean, is at the end of the sentence. Still on quotation mark, it is used to enclose nicknames and slang expressions. It is used to enclose nicknames and slang expression. Now let's see. President J.J. Rollins was called Boom. Probably you are too young to understand that. But I think I remember, right? Um, President Jerry John Rollins was called Boom. Let me say the late president because he is no more. Okay. And we used to, you know, call, he, he, he would speak and then say something. So we ended up, you know, naming him Boom. Okay. So you can see that in quotation mark. So ex-president JJ Rawlings was called Boom in quotation marks. Again, I was called Jackie Polo when I was in senior high school. Somebody might ask, was it like you loved Polo? Do you know, do you even know Polo, what Polo is? <laughs> so somebody might ask, was it like you liked or loved Polo so much? That was why they called you or named you Jackie Polo. That is me, Jackie, Jackie Polo. And that was what they used to call me when I was in senior high. I don't know what I did to call, you know, to get that name. Or I, I don't know what I did um, acquiring that name. I don't know how it came. But at the end of the day, they were all calling me Jackie Polo. I don't know why. Funny, right? All right. So you can see Jackie Polo in quotation mark. So I was called Jackie Polo when I was in senior high school. <laughs> right. So the next one we have... Guy Boyo Boyo is my other name while I was in teacher's college that I remember. We were three friends and we had gone to the first year and they asked us to do something called, it was a homo's night. All right, so I mean freshers who are in school and they asked us to do, it was, it, was, it was in a form of entertainment so we had to entertain the school. So it was an entertainment night, um, one Saturday evening and me and some of my mates uh, were three in number, I remember. Um, Mavis, Teresa, and myself. Then we we teamed up and then we made something very nice, as if it was a rap. Okay, so we were three. We sang songs and then, in the course of the song, that was the name I got. Okay, I remember the one in the middle was like on my right hand. And then she will uh, 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 reply and say, "Lady Marva." On my left hand, and then I went like, "Guy Boyo Boyo," something like that. It was fun. It was very, very fun and we enjoyed ourselves. And I can still recollect and remember, you know, to the extent that I'm even using it in my um, exercise or my slides with you. All right. So Guy Boyo Boyo is my other name whilst in teacher's college. And I still have my mates calling me that name and I enjoy it. It's fun. And I'm very, very sure that you girls or you boys have some pet names you are called when you are in school or even at home. Okay, right, right. That was just by the way. So here we go. We have the quotation marks here. I, I decided to bring more so you can choose from any which one is a quotation mark. So here you go. Quotation marks. Right. So I continue. It is used to enclose titles of short stories, magazines, articles, essays, single poems, songs, and television programs. So let's look at these examples. It is used to enclose titles of short stories, magazines, articles, essays, single poems, songs, and television programs. Right, so let's look at these examples. Have you watched Uncle Lebo White's recent play, Husband Material Seven Yards? I did. Honestly, I am a part of Riverman's production. So I have watched it and it was beautiful. 
I think it's being shown again. It's, it's, it's going to be shown again at the National Theatre very soon. Have you watched Uncle Ebo White's recent play, Husband Material Seven Yards, in quotation marks? Husband Material Seven Yards, in quotation marks. Number, the next one we have, have you ever watched Professor Martin Owuzo's play, in quotation marks, The Legend of Aku Sika? That's a long time story, remember? Akusika, um, that was about the golden arm, remember? Yes, yes. And I'm, I'm very sure most of you have, you know, experienced that story or watched it. I mean, even in By the Fireside, remember those times? I don't know whether you were born by the fireside when we had um, Mami Dokono, Grace of Marble, Madame Grace of Marble, you know, you know, doing all these things at the by, fire, by the fireside, you know. It was fun always. More examples, so Joy Learning, in quotation marks, is my favorite television program. Joy Learning, you can see the Joy Learning, in quotation marks, is my favorite television program. And I would want to believe that most of you, I mean, have chosen Joy Learning to be your most or your favorite television program. Show me by hands those who have done that or those who are, have chosen Joy Learning to be their favorite television program. Yes, I know, I know. I trust my learners. Right. Then we have The Mightier Sword is one of my favorite stage plays. Yes, I featured in The Mightier Sword at the Art Center with a group called Vision Theatre. Yes. And then I was the queen mother of Dentura. And then my name was is Brebre. Yeah, yes. So the Mighty Assault was a stage play and it was simply be about the war between Ashanti and then the Dangerous, the Ashantis and the Dangerous. It was beautiful. Yes. Now we move on to the exclamation. The exclamation. So it is used after a strong imperative sentence. It is used after a strong imperative sentence. So let's look at these examples. We have wake up. Wake up, and you can see the exclamation there. Come here. Come here. Are you writing down your examples? Right, so it is used after a strong imperative sentence still. Uh, shut up. You can see the exclamation. Get out. You can see the exclamation. We have, oh my God. You can see the exclamation as well. Okay, yes. So it is used after a strong imperative sentence. Shut up. Get out. Oh my God. You know, that kind of thing. All right? Good. So here we go with the exclamation max. All right. So this one has to do, I mean, different, different writings, different, different drawings. And then it's, it's more or less like a danger sign, you know. But that is not the danger sign. That is... Um, a punctuation mark called exclamation mark or exclamation sign. So you can choose any of them to be that sign. Okay? Now, it is used after an exclamation. So let's see these examples. Don't touch that gas electric pole. Don't touch that gas electric pole. Okay? Don't touch that gas electric pole. Now, go. Mommy is calling. Go. Mommy is calling. Then we have, oh my goodness, you did that. Oh my goodness, you did that. Then we have, what? Did you really do that? What? What? Did you really do that? That's a different meaning altogether. So it is used after an exclamation. What? Did you really do that? Can you give me more, like two or three examples? You know. Um, of the examples of the exclamation being used after an exclamation, okay? Right. Then we have the hyphen. The hyphen, it is used to join two or more words, used as a single word or as a single modifier. The hyphen. It is used to join two or more words, used as a single word or a single modifier so let's look at this example 
it is a well-built auditorium it's a well it is a well-built auditorium so you can see the hyphen there okay it is used to join two or more words used as a single word or a single modifier the next one we have i am 23 years of age that can't be my age no what how old are you okay i am 23 years of age somebody can go like i am 42 years of age you will still need the hyphen i am 31 years of age okay right the next one we have my mother will be 77 years old in december wow my mother will be 77 years old in december you can see the hyphen between the 77 and then the seven okay my mother will be 77 years old in december the next one it is used to link the parts of compound nouns that begins with the prefix great so self x or or the or the staff elect okay it is used to link the part of compound nouns that begins with the prefix great self x or or the staff elect now let's see his excellency nana adudankwa akufu ado is the president elect of ghana okay nana adudankwa akufu ado his excellency is the president elect of ghana so you can see the president elect between the president and the elect we have the hyphen can you give me another example your own example all right so his excellency nana adudankwa ekufuado is the president elect of ghana more examples here the ex-president has come to sunyane the ex-president has come to sunyane all right so the next one we have that is my ex-wife standing there that is my ex-wife standing there any other example more examples do we even have ex-mother do we have ex-father no no all right so you can give me um that's my ex-husband that's my ex-wife standing there okay so you can see that between the ex and the wife we have the hyphen now the next one you have my mother's ex-husband is a bully my mother's ex-husband is a bully all right so this kind of husband or this kind of daddy would be bullying the bullying the, the the younger ones at home especially when that child is not his own okay so my mother's ex-husband is a bully so here we go and that is a sign of the hyphen that is a sign of the hyphen in different colors black and white pink yellow you can choose one okay right so i have the dash if you don't see the hyphen and the dash uh, i mean the sign is almost the same okay but i think um their function is different they function differently all right so it, this this one is dash so it is used to separate a sudden change in thoughts it is used to separate a sudden change in thought now let's look at these examples we will bath and then step out that then you can see the dash i don't know where we will go a sudden change in thoughts remember it is used to separate a sudden change in thought uh, the example we have we will bath and then step out i don't know where we will go okay so i don't know where we will go even though we are going to bath and then step out all right now the next one we have i will walk to the theater and back i don't know what to do confused all right so it's a separating you know these these actions okay um, a sudden change in thoughts i will walk to the theater and back i don't know what to do you can see the dash there i continue um it is used to separate an introductory thought from the explanation that follows. It is used to separate an introductory thought from the explanation 
that follows examples we have writing the entrance exams that is my aim writing the entrance exams that is my aim so you can see that it is um, separating the an introductory thought from the explanation that follows so why do you want to write the entrance exams that is my main focus that is my aim okay now the next one we have to perform on stage is my target to perform on stage is my target i have this friend um his name is Chrissy sunday um one of the it was one of the guys who did this reality show um I have forgotten the name and then he 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 always said that he would love to be on um the national theater stage he said he kept saying it he kept saying it and truly recently he he was there to perform and it was beautiful so to perform on stage is my target okay so that was his, his target to perform on the national theater stage was his target and that he he really really um got there okay he got there Right, so the next one we have, beating that girl is my goal. Oh my goodness. Beating that girl is my goal. It means that she did something bad. Okay, so I will stand here and say that beating a na is my goal. It means that na is probably doing something bad or um, is always doing something bad. So that is my aim. That is to beat na. That is my goal. Okay, great. So here we go. That is the dash. So like I said, the dash and the, high, um, the hyphen look alike, but they function differently. Okay. They function differently. Right. So we have the last one, I think. Um, parenthesis. Parenthesis. Okay. Um, what we mostly call is a bracket. Yes. Let's see what it does. It is used to enclose a remark that does not affect a sentence structure. It is used to enclose a remark that does not affect a sentence structure. So let's look at these examples. These examples. Amma told me that her brother, the one whom she lives with, is admitted at the hospital. So you can see the parenthesis. Where does it start from? The one whom she lives with. Closed. So open the one whom she lives with. Closed. Okay. So Amma told me that. Her brother, you know, we are explaining further, who is that brother? The one who she lives with is admitted at the hospital. Okay? So we can simply go like, Amma told me that her brother is admitted at the hospital. But it looks like it is explaining further exactly who is she talking about. Amma told me that her brother, the one whom she lives with, is admitted at the hospital. The next one we have, Kafui confessed to his friend, the one whom he attends school with, that he actually stole the money. Ooh. Kafui confessed to his friend, the one whom he attends school with, that he actually stole the money. So it can go like, Kafui confessed to his friend that he actually stole the money. But probing further, exactly which friend? So the one whom he attends school with. Okay, so you can see the parenthesis um, from the one whom he attends school with into brackets there that he actually stole the money. Right. So here we go with the diagrams or the images or the pictures of parenthesis. Yes, I think we used to call it brackets. Yeah, right. So they are in different shapes, in different, different forms. You can choose any which one, but they are all called parenthesis. Yes, I think. Right. So we have more. It is used to enclose numbers, letters, or references. So examples we have. She was here in the morning about 8 a.m. So about 8 a.m. is in the parenthesis form. Okay. She was here in the morning about 8 a.m. The next one, I saw him with my very own eyes on the park around 6 p.m. Okay. So you can see the parenthesis in red. The next one, the exams will start in the morning at about 7 a.m. 
you can see that as well in the parentheses. Okay, so it is used to enclose numbers, letters, or references. Right. Good. So we are going to work. I have spoken about almost all of them, the punctuation marks. Okay, I started with last week's own, revised with you, and then I added up. Okay, so with this one, I have just mixed them, and we are going to do them together. And I think I have an assignment for you. I think so. Let's see. Now, put in the appropriate punctuation marks. Okay, I have done this with you, so let's go. Add, there we go. I did not finish eating the meal. Instead, I left for school. I did not finish eating the meal. Instead, I left for school. Okay, so we have here, semicolon is going to be here, okay? Now, the next one we have, shut up. Remember that exclamation, shut up. Then we have, we will win the football match. They said, we will win the football match. They said, so that is our answer. We are going to have this one. Then, help, I'm dying. Help, I'm dying. And that is another exclamation. And it's going to be after the, help, I'm dying. Okay. Now, the number five I have, I drank Pepsi. I drank Pepsi. Messi drank tea. I drank Pepsi, Messi drank tea. So that we have that answer, semicolon there. Good, I continue. I want to see that actor, that's my focus. I want to see that actor, that's my focus. So you can see the answer is going to be a dash. So I want to see that actor, dash, that's my focus. You remember? Number seven, she is my ex-wife. She is my ex-wife. So you can see the answer there, hyphen. Number eight, what is your mission at this place? What is your mission at this place? And that is a question. So you can see the question mark. Number nine, I love to work mathematics. I love to work mathematics. So there you go, it's a full stop. And then number 10, my quotation mark was Luke 934. My quotation mark was Luke 934. And then we have here the colon. So my quotation mark was Luke, bring the colon there, three, four, or Luke 934, okay? My quotation mark was Luke 934. Now we have this assignment. I, I, I am not going to do it with you. I have done some with you. And since you are very, very conversant or very, very sure of the punctuation marks now, I can gladly read this to you. In fact, take your pens and write them down. I'm going to give you the time to write. Then you are going to answer this, this very, very assignment. And then you send them to me via my Facebook account, Jacqueline Clegg. Okay. Or, you know, our, our, our um, social media handles. Joy Learning TV, okay, right. So I am talking so you can have time to read or to write this down, okay. So this is your assignment and you are going to do it, screenshot it and send it to us and then I'll definitely gladly mark it for you, okay. Right, so read the paragraph and put in the missing punctuation marks. So we have the question mark, the colon, the full stop, the uh, 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 apostrophe, the semicolon, 
they have i mean we have everything in here okay so almost all the punctuation marks would have to be or would have to appear here okay right it was a stormy thursday afternoon it was a stormy thursday afternoon then you can see the dash okay so wherever you see the dash that is where you are going to put your punctuation mark there okay that is where you're going to put your punctuation mark there it was a stormy thursday afternoon my elder sister couldn't pick me up from school so i was supposed to walk home do you need a ride home my friend's dad asked me i'll just walk i said i will just walk i said I love the rain. I didn't want to get a ride and miss a chance to play in the rain. Do you like rain? Have you ever played in the rain? So much fun. So much fun. I like to jump in puddles and make the water splash all over. Doesn't that sound like fun? So there I was walking home when I saw a huge puddle. I of course ran over and jumped in the pool of water. Oh no, I shouted. Can you guess what happened? The water splashed up and made my pants soaking wet. My mom is going to be furious. Very nice story, right? Just like we do always, always, always when we close from school, instead of going home, we would pass here, we would go here. By the time we get home, we are so messed up that um, mommy or daddy gets angry seeing you. This is exactly what this one did, okay? Let's go back to the story again. This time you are going to write it down and then you are going to put in your punctuation marks. Okay? So read the paragraph and put in the missing punctuation marks. Like I said, you are going to put in your question marks, your apostrophe, your colon, your semicolon, your dash, your hyphen, wh whichever fits, whichever, I mean, they can't position, you would have to put it there. Okay, so I don't believe that you're copying it. So I read again. It was a stormy Thursday afternoon, sorry. It was a stormy Thursday afternoon. My elder sister couldn't pick me up from school. So I was supposed to walk home. Do you need a ride home? My friend's dad asked me. I'll just walk, I said. Of course so he wanted to walk because he knew what he wanted to do because as a child if you are offered a ride if somebody wants to offer you a ride I mean you should be happy you should be very very glad to just you know hop in the car and then you move but this one said no he would just would want to walk why did he say that because he knew what he wanted to do okay I love the rain I didn't want to get a ride and miss a chance to play in the rain. So there you go. The reason why he didn't want to go with the, uh, the friend's dad, okay, with the offer. Do you like rain? Have you ever played in the rain? So much fun. So much fun. Which, which, of, the, which of the marks will be here? So much fun. I am stressing on that because... I am very, very interested in that, I mean, in that very, very line, okay? I like, I like to jump in paddles and make the water splash all over. Doesn't that sound like fun? I love the rain. 
I didn't want to get a ride and miss the chance to play in the rain. Do you like rain? Have you ever played in the rain? So much fun! I like to jump in paddles and make the water splash all over. Doesn't that sound like fun? I move on to the next one. So there I was walking, th there I was walking home when I saw a huge puddle. I of course ran over and jumped in the pool of water. I think I have done this before when I was young. No, I think I went, I rather went with my friends to a swimming pool. And by the time I got home, my eyes were red. Honestly, I was almost killed. If, if, if I was killed, I wouldn't be standing here. I was almost killed. I mean, I was so late coming home. My eyes, my dresses, everything was so wet. And when I got home, I was almost killed. I mean, you know, children and their stuff, okay? I, of course, ran over and jumped in the pool of water. Oh, no! I shouted. Can you guess what happened? The water splashed up and made my pants soaking wet. Oh my goodness, I recollect. I, I am just recollecting what I did and what happened that day. My mom is going to be furious. So that is what he's saying, knowing what he has done or what he had done. Okay, and like I'm standing here saying, when I did it, I mean those years, all those, all those years, my mother got angry. I mean, he, she, she actually beat me. She beat me up. I was, I was in basic, um, I was in basic five or six. Oh, yes. You know, during those times, you just don't have time. Always playing, playing, and playing. So she equally got angry, very, very furious, and she beat me up. All right. So it's the same thing happening here. He didn't want to go home. He wanted to walk, have fun, you know, and then went to jump in a huge puddle, getting soaked all over. And then she, he, he getting home, the mother got so angry. Okay. So here you go. You are going to put in the punctuation marks for me and then you send them or snapshots and send them to my Facebook account, um, Jacqueline Clerk. Oh. Yes, and then on our social media handles, Joy Learning uh, TV, you, you can send them to me. And then I am going to mark them for you, like we do it always. All right? So I would want to believe that you have enjoyed the lesson, and you are going to do the assignment and send them to me, and then I would mark them. Okay, so I, I would want to believe that you have really enjoyed yourself and learned so many things, okay? Um, so like we keep saying, Joy Learning, keep learning. We will never, never, never stop learning. We are not dying anytime soon, so we are always, always going to learn. Till I come your way again next week, all I can say is a bye-bye, and then keep learning. I'll see you. Bye. Your channel, Joy Learning TV.